to the Raise Your Energy podcast. My name is Linda Lange and I'm your host and energy expert. Today we are going to investigate limiting beliefs that we collected throughout our childhood and how they can suddenly become limited instead of helping us in our lives. I'm going to share with you one of my biggest examples discovering a limiting belief and even finding out of where it came from in my childhood. So stay tuned for more. The world that we're living in currently keeps changing quicker and quicker and sometimes it's hard to understand what to still believe in and what not. This is a perfect reason and the perfect time to get to know our beliefs, to get to know them better and to leverage them for our benefit. It can be scary for us to change something that we have believed in maybe for a very long time or very deeply because we highly cherish that belief or that belief system and we have it really integrated in our lives and that is completely understandable and normal. Some people even believe that the whole personality is based on one belief system and what they believe in is truly who they are in their essence but we are so much more than what we or a group of people believe in and for us to be able to start to let go of some of these beliefs especially if they're hindering us we first of all need to understand what they actually are a belief is just a thought. A thought that you keep having or in the past you kept having that thought and it turned into a belief. A belief is a thought that you kept having again and again so it turned into something stronger than just a thought and it sets itself into the conscious or even subconscious mind. It's like a software that was programmed to run in the background of your computer, like a virus scan. That's why we are not even always aware of all of our beliefs. But even if we are aware of them and hold them very dear to our heart, very close, and we are scared to let go of them, we give our power away kind of to them. We let them rule our lives and we are not in our full power if we are not able to even grasp the idea of letting go of a belief for our growth, for our development, for our happiness in our lives. So we want to look maybe a little bit more objectively on our beliefs and understand where they are coming from. Quite often our beliefs are not even something that we created. It might have been a group of people or somebody in our lives or not even directly in our lives who created that belief that we took on and they believe built our life around. So maybe it is time to find a belief in your life that is ready to leave your life, that is ready to let go of and for you to create and let out a new belief or not even another belief but just to feel that freedom that you can get if you're able to let go of something in your life. A lot of our beliefs are very, very helpful. (laughs) They let us run our lives quite automatically and they create, of course, as well, our society. 
they create our morality, they create our nations and our belief systems and our religions and everything that we have created over hundreds and hundreds of years is based on beliefs, is based on thoughts that at some point somebody had. So for us to live our lives now, a lot of them are very helpful because we are able to just live our lives quite easily and smoothly because of them. But what if there is a belief inside of you that is stopping you from moving forward, from overcoming something, from reaching your purpose or even discovering your purpose and finding a way of living that is just with more ease and with more joy, would you not want to discover this one or couple of limiting beliefs? I bet you do. So let's have a closer look at how beliefs are even created in the first place. And I want to explain as well of why I named this episode not just limiting beliefs, but from our childhood. So why it is so formative that we look at our childhood when we try to discover some limiting beliefs. When we are young, all information around us, all activities, experiences, impressions, go straight into our subconscious. The reason for that is that our analytical mind is not yet developed until we are about seven years old. And our analytical mind is kind of a gate, a decision maker of what comes in and what doesn't get stored as a belief to some degree. And if we think about that a child from when it's born until it's about seven years old doesn't have that gate, doesn't have that decision maker, we can see that everything that is said around that child, everything that child experiences and listens to and observes gets just unfiltered, stored in their system, in their mind and mostly in their subconscious mind. That's where a lot of stuff, that's where our personality gets created. The personality that you're living today has mostly been created in your very early years. So we know that these gates were not there when we were young. So everything around us, everything we saw and observed, everything we heard and experiences just went straight into our subconscious and it got stored there, right? But think about it that a child's mind is not yet fully developed like our mind now that we have as adults. A child doesn't have the full understanding of relationships, of the people in their lives and who they present, who they present themselves to be in their lives. A child doesn't have the same level of understanding of how the world works than an adult. So a lot of information that gets collected in that young life might be stored and filed away a bit weirdly. A child takes everything for the truth and as the only truth, especially what their parents are saying. A two or three year old does not understand a lot of the meaning of the words yet. They don't have the background knowledge or stories that are necessary to understand certain situations. They don't understand, for example, um, sarcasm or banter or slang. So everything that they heard, that they experienced at that time went as their truth of life into their subconscious in a way that they captured it. It's like a snapshot that they took with that level of understanding of the world at that moment in time. So the filing system might be a little bit off kilter if we would be able to look back at it as an adult. We all have 
that filing system inside of us and sometimes something might have got stored in a way if we look at it now we say why why did that happen but if we think back we were very young and we might not have fully understood what was going on in that situation and therefore we have stored it a bit differently from how we perceive the world as adults if you have ever worked with a coach or a therapist to understand and find the reason behind a certain situation in your life or a behavior that you have, you might have come across a belief that is the cause of it. And you might be very surprised what you discover. As an adult, you would never believe this statement, this belief but you will have collected it as a young child and stored it deep inside of you. And now you are highly surprised of what comes out of the woodwork of your deep archive filing system. Now that we know what beliefs are and how they can be created, we want to dig a little bit deeper into the beliefs that are limiting us or hindering us. Limiting beliefs are thoughts that you keep having that are holding you back from moving forward, from overcoming something or from your development, your growth. If you want to achieve something in your life and you have a belief that is working directly against that goal, then this is a limiting belief. A few examples are Let's say you wish to become a world-class actor and a star in Hollywood movies, but you keep having doubting thoughts like, who am I to be famous? Oh, I'm not special. I probably can't be famous. Maybe someone in your childhood once told you that you're not special. And that belief that Saying that thought of that person just got stored in your subconscious as a truth. And it's still there and it's whispering to you again and again, especially in more challenging situations where you are pushed out of your comfort zone. It might come up again. You might not be aware of you having these kind of thought patterns because these beliefs are so programmed into your subconscious and running your automatic programs that you're not conscious of what is happening. But this belief that you're not special enough to be famous is going to sabotage your success in the film industry. Your path to becoming famous, that's what you want. You might be struggling on that path. You might find it very, very hard and potentially you will never achieve it because deep down you think you're not worth it. I had one of these limiting beliefs in my life for a very long time and to some degree I still have it because it was very formative. But now that I know about it, I can manage it. I can overcome it. If it comes up again, I can let it go in that one situation or just overcome it by my consciousness of it. So I want to share with you of how I discovered it, how it appeared some, suddenly in my life as limiting and how I even found out of where it comes from. It took me a long time to realize it. At the same time, I think the realization came to me at a point where it was just the most crucial and maybe in the past it wasn't so limiting. And when I did discover it, I discussed it with a business coach and she helped me to discover of where in my childhood it was actually formed. So let's start with the first time that I actually realized this belief or this belief system inside of me. Because the first time that I realized it, that I had this within myself was not the first time that I was ever told about it. But when I realized, I then looked back in my life and I saw other signs. 
other opportunities for me to could have realized it earlier, opportunities that I just didn't take or I was maybe not ready to realize it. The belief that I came to realize was my view of hierarchies. My thinking and my behaving has been always very hierarchical, which means that, for example, I put my senior colleagues in my corporate world on a pedestal. On the one side, I highly respected them, I followed their guidance, and there was nothing wrong with that. But on the other side, I criticized them if I saw faults in them, if they didn't live up to the hierarchical standards that lived inside of me. I thought that if you are more senior, if you're a leader in the company I'm working for, if you get more paid than me, then you're better than me. And if you're better than me, then you have to perform better than me and you have to be a specialist in everything, especially in everything that I'm a specialist in. So I realized this for the first time when I received feedback from my boss after a leadership meeting. I was in that meeting to explain a new compensation system for our sales employees. And I was a specialist in that change of the compensation system because I attended a lot of the training. So I was responsible to implement it in our country. I had to explain in that meeting to that German leadership team of how it works and what the impact of the changes are to our organization and to the sales employees. In that meeting, my boss observed me and told me afterwards that I did not play the role of the expert. If someone from the leadership team had something against what I was telling them, they just overruled me or they pitched their own ideas or their own understanding of that change in the compensation system. And I let it happen because of my hierarchical belief system. I thought that they are the more senior people in the room, so they were no better. I thought that it wasn't my place as a more junior person in the room to go against them or to speak up. But what my boss told me is that I was the expert and I should have guided the conversation instead of letting some of these leadership team members take it over. That was the first time it truly clicked with me that I have a belief, a belief system inside of me that is now holding me back. Earlier in my career, it might not have been such a problem. It might have influenced me, my career, my work for my whole life because it was a system that was, of course, there all the time since my childhood. But I was earlier in my career, I was just what we call an individual contributor. I wasn't a leader yet. I wasn't a manager yet. So that belief system might have even helped me to progress. It was just there. It wasn't a limiting belief system. I hope you understand the difference now. So when I visited a few weeks later my business coach, I told her about that discovery and the feedback that I received. And we talked it through and I started to realize that this belief has hindered me potentially in previous areas and that I got that feedback before just in completely different situations or in different words. But a lot of situations that I suddenly remembered where I received some feedback, they all kind of overlap. They all kind of said the same things, but in completely different words. So talking it through with my coach, she took me through an exercise to look back into my past, especially my childhood, to see if I can find out where this belief has come from. 
and there I discovered it. I got my hierarchical belief system and thinking from my days practicing judo as a child. If you have never come across judo, it is a Japanese martial art form that uses a gentle way of fighting. And what comes with martial arts is a very hierarchical thinking in the structure and very high respect to your trainer. You are trained to be very respectful and subordinate to your trainer. And I spent nearly 10 years practicing judo, so it makes sense that it had such a high influence, such a high impact on me and who I became. Still, it was a huge surprise for me to uncover that my childhood sport installed such a strong belief system inside of me that suddenly hindered my career progression. It was really surprising to me. It made complete sense when I saw it all, but it was still kind of a, how do these two things fit together? And that's what I sometimes think is a funny, the, the hilarious thing about discovering some of your limiting beliefs and finding out of where they actually came from. It was, of course, truly be powerful for me to figure this out because it helped me now to manage that belief system. I mean, this belief system was there for a long, long time, so it wasn't as easy for me to just let it go and then it's gone. But by me knowing about it, being conscious about that it is inside of me, every time it would reel its head again, I was able to step away from it and see it for what it is and overcome it if I wanted to. And with that awareness that I created by realizing the limiting belief in the first place and discovering of where it actually came from, I was able to wake myself up and decide to behave differently if I needed to. What was right when I was a child practicing judo is not useful anymore in my current life as a manager and future leader in a company. So I hope this example that I shared with you, how something from your childhood can influence your current life and growth, helps you to go on your own journey, to discover something that is maybe hindering you now and stopping you, and to find it and to let go of it. And you don't always have to find out the root cause of that belief. The most important part for you is to find the limiting belief in itself and to work on letting it go. Of course, if it hinders you, but otherwise you wouldn't be looking out for it. <laughs> you don't always get to find out the root cause of a limiting belief. It might have been so small, such a small event in your childhood that you don't remember it. You see that my limiting belief system came from being for 10 years in a martial arts club and classes. That is a very long time. That is, of course, something I truly remember and easily remember. But you can sometimes find a limiting belief that you will never find out of where it really came from, who it installed in you, or what situation made you save it in your filing system. It's not necessary to find it out. If you're interested in it, you can try to find it, but it's not necessary. It can just be easier for you to let it go if you understand where it came from. So it's always good to look of where it came from if you can find it. Uncovering a lot of these beliefs, these stored impactful moments, and sometimes these unraveling kind of trauma that we experienced before is called working with your inner child. We have these formative years from what we like 
and what we don't like, who we are attracted to and who are, we are not attracted to. But that does not mean that this has to stay like it is today. It does not mean that certain beliefs that were formed when we were young cannot be changed anymore. You don't have to keep living with something for the rest of your life just because it happened to you 20 years ago. You can start seeing your memories as snapshots from your past. Like you have a camera inside of you that captures a full experience in that moment with all your senses and all the feelings you had at that moment. But it is still just a snapshot from a past event. It's gone, but you are still carrying it inside of you and it still influences you today. But if it is limiting you now, then you can decide to let it go. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and for me to be able to share one of my stories with you. Uncovering some of our beliefs is hugely powerful and can change your life for the better if you're willing to look closer. So make sure to share this episode as well with somebody who can benefit from this message. And let me know in the comments if it helped you. Maybe you can share with me if you have discovered a limiting belief before or you will very soon after this episode. Thank you again. And with that, I love you and leave you. Talk soon and bye-bye.